ladies and gentlemen, we will have a keynote speech, a keynote presentation. And for that, we'll like to welcome our presenter, Mr. David Gentle, the Director of Strategy and Foresight of Fujitsu Limited, to present to us on the title, Human-Centric Innovation Driving Digital Transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Gentle. Data is all around us. At Fujitsu, we know when we connect it with people, amazing digital transformations can happen. Like helping parents to look after their children, wherever they are. Or gathering information to help retailers give customers exactly what they want. Working with farmers to monitor livestock and increase productivity. Applying advances in big data analysis to keep workers safe anywhere on Earth. making entire cities work more fluidly than was ever thought possible. Harnessing data through human-centric innovation to turn the previously unthinkable into reality. Fujitsu. Shaping tomorrow with you. Good morning, everyone. My name's David Gentle. It's a real pleasure to be here in Kuala Lumpur. Um, I'm actually based in the UK. I'm from England, hence the linen suit. Um, and I want to talk to you today about um, Fujitsu's vision. So I'm part of the, the team that create and develop our corporate vision. And it really kind of underpins a lot of what we do um, in all of the places that we, that we operate around the world. Um, my talk today is really in three parts. I want to I want to really talk about um, to start by talking about the technology trends, what's happening with technology, and how that's changing uh, what businesses can 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 realise from it. Um, then I want to talk about um, what we as an organisation are doing to respond to that. You know how we're changing, and then finally I want to talk about some examples of innovation that we're 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 making with our customers and give you a bit of a feel for actually what working with Fujitsu looks and feels like. So I want to start really by looking at the technology story. What's the what's the story of evolving technology? And you know, I think there's probably some key parallels with some of the things that you've already heard this morning here. The way we see the digital story evolving really is, is as a series of waves. Um, you know, digital really started with the, with the internet. That really kind of created the foundation. Um, upon which then, you know, these new waves have, 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 have been built using that as, you know, each previous wave as a foundation. So we had this really remarkable um, wave of mobile technology, which has become a real, you know, huge revolution across the, the world. I mean, if you think about it, you know, today there's something like two billion smartphones in use around the world. Um, by 2020, people are saying that that's going to rise to something like four billion smartphones. So, kind of roughly, you know, one for every two people in the world. Um, and 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 the really incredible thing about this is that it's, it, you know, it's got more in common really with things like. Um, I don't know, shoes and, and toothbrushes um, than, it, than it has with any kind of previous computing device because it's just become so ubiquitous. You know, everyone is using mobile technology. And of course, underpinned by that, we've seen the growth of cloud technologies um, that, that really has sort of go together with, with mobility. Um, but we're moving into a third wave, which is the wave of the Internet of Things. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, 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 are talking about this huge growth of kind of physical devices um, that are connected to the internet. It's the sort of the digital digitalization of the physical world, where you know the mobile wave was was more about 
um, the digitalization of people's everyday lives. Um, and this is going to be incredibly significant, particularly in terms of the data that it's going to generate. Um, it's going to give us huge amounts of data about what's going on in the world around us, which gives us the opportunities to generate new insights and really sort of control and, and bring greater certainty of the things around us. Um, but then we see moving beyond that into a fourth wave, which is the wave of artificial intelligence and robotics. And again, you know, this is built on the foundation of the previous waves. And a lot of people think about artificial intelligence as being a sort of a, you know, a high performance computing driven thing. And in many ways it is, but actually, you know, we think the data is, 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 is almost going to be the strongest driver for artificial intelligence, that there'll be such a deluge of data um, being generated that actually artificial intelligence, you know, intelligence systems will be the only thing that's, that, that really is capable of, 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 of leveraging that. That will be so much, it will be difficult for, for, for humans really to, 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 to be able to do that. Um, now, I'm often asked, you know, when I talk about this slide, well, what's the time scale on this? And, and, you know, it's very difficult to answer that question because actually the time scale depends on rates of adoption, which are different between different industries, different organizations, and different parts of the world, and so on. Um, but one way you can think of it is that, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid-40s now, and so when I first started out in my career, the Internet was, was really just beginning. Um, you know, it was, just, it was just beginning to sort of gather momentum. And, and I think all being well, when I retire in sort of around 20 years' time, I think we'll probably o be over here. You know, in artificial intelligence will be a, a, a kind of a mainstream technology capability. And so where we are today, I think, is sort of somewhere in the middle here um, at, a, at a kind of inflection point. And, and, and this is the reason why, you know, digital transformation has become such a, such a hot topic at the moment. So if that's the technology view, um, probably more important than that is the, the business view. Um, and we, we talk to a lot of customers around the world about you know, the, the, the business outcomes, the business values of digital transformation. And what's interesting about these conversations is that we always get a sort of slightly different answer depending on who we're talking to. Um, and the reason for that is that digital transformation delivers business outcomes. Um, so, so actually the answer depends on what an organization is trying to do around its business, how it's um, creating value. Um, so, for example, if you talk to an organization in this, in a, that's a service provider in the, in the service industry, like a retailer or an airline or something like that, um, they're very interested in digital transformation as a way of delivering uh, better relationships with customers, delivering perhaps greater intimacy with their, with their customers. If you talk to a manufacturing company, they're much more interested in digital transformation as a means of creating operational efficiency or creating... Um, you know, even more streamlined ways of, 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 of managing their supply chains. If you talk to a product company, they're interested in digital transformation as a way of bringing new innovation into their products, new features, new, new, new functions. Um, and these, if you like, are the sort of the entry points into digital transformation because as you get more mature, as you start to bring digital technologies more into the core of your business, perhaps use a, a digital platform, for example, to run your business. So you're then able to sort of realize these higher, higher value um, outcomes, if you like. You can actually start to innovate around your business, the way that the business creates value in the industry. And this is where you see the sort of the, these examples of organizations that sort of draw all the headlines, like Uber, like Netflix, like Spotify, you know, they've been able to use these digital technologies really to kind of disrupt, um, disrupt industries. Um, so what does this mean for a, a, a technology provider like Fujitsu? Well, it, well, well, that, you know, means that we have to operate in a different way. You know, and we've recognized now that the, 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 the applications of technology are incredibly powerful. Um, so we have this vision um, of, of technology enabling this, this society where people are, are much more empowered through innovation. It's a safer, more prosperous, more sustainable society. And, and, and we think now for the first time this is really um, achievable and, and, and can be made really tangible through these technologies. Um, 
but you have to do this in a certain way. You know, it, 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 it means a kind of change in mindset. And in this current era of digital transformation, we think human-centric innovation is, is really the approach that you have, to, you have to take towards innovation. In other words, innovation is no longer something that happens in your organization's back office. You know, it's no longer something that's about uh, impacting sort of the efficiency of some of your business processes. It's much more holistic than that. And so we call human-centric human innovation really the coming together of people, information, and infrastructure. And, 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 and this is a kind of a new sort of innovation and a new way that we think we need to, we need to consider innovation. But of course, um, this isn't easy, right? Um, digital transformation is not an easy thing like any sort of metamorphosis that, 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 that people or things go through. Um, and there's you know, huge challenges associated with that. And again, when we talk to our customers, um, they, they, they really kind of mention four main sort of categories of challenge. Um, the first one that customers always talk about is the is the human angle. Um, you know, so how do we, as an organisation, uh, build consensus around the things that we do in digital transformation? You know, how do we create a strategy? How do we uh, hire the right people? Where do we find skills in the Internet of Things, in artificial intelligence, in machine learning, things like that? Um, and then the second uh, challenge is security. You know, as, as Andrew's been sharing in his in his presentation, as he mentioned, you know, this is a really hot topic. Um, there was a, a survey of CEOs carried out by Fortune magazine last year, um, and 66% of chief executives named cybersecurity as the number one threat to their to their businesses. So this is not CIOs; this is CEOs recognizing uh, the threat from security. Um, but then you think about how you come to sort of implement digital transformation. You know, complexity is actually a really big problem, a really big challenge, because digital transformation, you're effectively moving from something that's, you know, perhaps a simpler world to a world that's more complex. You're bringing in new technologies. The number of technologies that you're trying to manage is increasing. So it's a much more complex environment that you have to, you have to think about how you're going to manage, how you're going to manage without introducing greater risks into your, into your business. And then finally, you know, as, as I've said, digital transformation involves a change in mindset. So people have to adjust to that. You know, there's a time to adopt these things. So things like reg regulation and so on all need to change. But often, you know, people are slower to, to change than the technology is to advance. So as an organization, um, we believe the real, the real sort of secret, the real key uh, to how you manage digital, digital transformation is to create balance. You know, you need to find a balance between the traditional technologies, your technology foundation, if you like, uh, that your businesses run on, um, with how you can safely introduce these new technologies without compromising security, without really adding to the to the to the complexity of what you're trying to what you're trying to manage, and. At Fujitsu, we are evolving our portfolio um, very much in a way that we can bring balance to our organizations, so allow them to kind of manage safely what they have, but at the same time be able to bring in the new innovative technologies that can kind of drive these higher business outcomes. Um, so that's kind of a feel for sort of where we're at and where we're, we're going. I'd like to talk about some some examples of human-centric innovation that we've been doing with, with our customers from around the world. Um, the first customer I want to talk about is headquartered in Sweden. Um, they're a major retail, high street retail organization. They have 2,500 stores in cities around the world. Um, and when we were talking to them, they were describing a really sort of interesting business challenge they have, which is although you know, their, their business is built around the physical retail experience, so people coming into their stores, people trying on clothes, you know, getting the, sort of the touch and feel of, 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 of what they can buy. At the same time, they have this, this sort of threat from online retailers, or maybe it's not a threat, but online retailers are able to, 
to do things that they can't. So an online retailer is able to sort of really get a, a, a fundamental understanding of their customer that a, that a physical retailer will find difficult. Um, so to explain that, you know, if you imagine going onto a, a, the website of a, an online retailer, you know, that organization can see where you've come from. They can see the things that you're clicking on. They can see the things that, that you're interested in. Um, they can really kind of map out your journey, um, your customer experience journey um, that you have with them. Um, and they can, they can see in real time, you know, how effective their marketing strategies are and so on. Um, physical retailers don't have that. With a physical retailer, they've really got two points that they can, they can, they can uh, in engage with their customers, really. There's the, there's, the, there's the door to their outlet, seeing customers coming in and going out. And there's their point of sale. And beyond those two, two points, they don't really have a clear idea of what their customers are doing. Um, so we created a solution for them, which is based on the in-store Wi-Fi. And, and we piloted this at a, a, a major store they have uh, in, in Sweden, which is actually built over five floors. So it's a major, a major store, this. Um, and using the in-store app, um, the solution provided information about what, where customers were going in the store, what their journey was. Um, and the data was all anonymized. So they, were, they, were, they, they, they deliberately didn't want to, 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 to have data with named customers, but it was, it was all about seeing which customers were taking wh what journeys through the store. And it gave them incredibly valuable information um, that came into a, a, a dashboard that we created for them in real time. So they could see where people were going, they could see how effective their in-store marketing was. And it's given them some real insights about how they can um, uh, ch change the layout of their stores, make their stores more effective. Um, so it's been a very successful solution, and they're now rolling this out in, uh, in Japan and, and in some stores across Southeast Asia. Um, I want to take you to the United States now. Um, and this is a customer, it's actually GE, um, which is interesting to see Andrew mention it, because um, you know, they're, they're a very sort of cutting edge organization in terms of how they're embracing uh, digital transformation. Um, and we've been working with their, um, their power organization, GE Power. And they have a factory uh, in South Carolina in the States, and this factory makes gas turbines. Now, gas turbines are absolutely enormous feats of engineering. Um, their largest gas turbines um, effectively weigh the same as a Boeing 747. They have the same, produce the same amount of power as 1,200 Ferraris, um, and they produce enough energy to, to power 400 homes, four, sorry, 400,000 homes uh, for a whole year. So these are extraordinary things, and they are made of, as you would expect, literally tens of thousands of individual components. Now, as a manufacturing organization, managing that scale of supply chain, that scale of inventory, is a, is a real challenge. And coupled with that, to, to, to build one of these gas turbines um, involves over uh, 5,000, using over 5,000 individual tools and gauges. And the gauges that they use to make these things all have to be correctly calibrated. Um, so it's not just a question of managing the tools, it's a question of making sure that the status of the, sto the tools that you're using uh, is, 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 is correct. Um, so we've created a solution for them using our Globe Ranger technology. Um, and it's very simple technology, but it's, an incredibly, it's incredibly powerful. Um, so it's based around RFID tags, so you can add an RFID tag to a physical component, and it allows, it, allows you to kind of attach very simple pieces of information um, to, to that tag, which can then be picked up by sensors along the production process. So, for example, when uh, components come into their warehouse, uh, they get tagged, and when, say if they, they, they put them in a forklift truck, and the forklift truck takes them to a, a location in the warehouse, um, the, the, the kit is kind of automatically logged at this new location in the, in, the, in the warehouse by sensors. So they know in real time where everything is. And this is incredibly powerful for managing the, the, um, the, the overall supply chain process. Uh, so they can know how much, um, they can know the kind of the status of all, the, all their components, and they can avoid duplication of, uh, <coughs> uh, of ordering of components, and they can make sure that everything is, is there just in time. But perhaps even more importantly, 
they can manage the tools much better. So they can manage the status of the tools, um, and they can make sure that everything is 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 used. Uh, just, just um, everything is configured exactly how it should be and, and tracked. Now, for for um, a company like you know the the, the, the scale of operation that they're, they're using, this is a kind of game-changing um, technology. You know, this this is we estimate uh, that it can reduce the inventory cost by something like 30%. You know, when you think these gas turbines retail for anything around the the, the area of 100 million dollars. You know, you get a feel for the size of the inventory that this this organisation needs needs to needs to handle, and what kind of a game-changing uh, cost saving that that potentially that potentially is for them. Um, but actually, you know, although the the business case for this sort of technology can be built around, um, uh, you know, the the, the 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 fact that you hold a, a lower inventory. Um, what organizations like this are telling us is that they get kind of a, a, an even greater value from, from actually being able to see their production line in real time. So they can actually innovate around their production process and find new ways of, of, of doing things, which, which is incredibly powerful. Um, the next example, I want to take you to Ireland. Um, now, in Ireland, we are... Um, taking a, a, an innovative new approach to healthcare, which is actually going through clinical trials there at the moment. Um, and just to explain it, as you think about the, the, one of the largest challenges in healthcare is, is, is knowing when to release a patient. So you have a patient who will be um, occupying a hospital bed, say, um, and the challenge for the healthcare professionals is to know when's the optimal time to free up that resource for another patient and let that patient go back to their home where obviously they're better off being able to live their, their, their normal life. Um, but clearly, you don't want to risk releasing them too soon where they may be you know, uh, at a risk of complications developing or having a relapse. Um, so assisted living is a technology, really, or a solution that kind of is a halfway house, if you like, between the hospital and the, and the patient's home life. Um, it's a, an environment, a living environment that we've created where the patient can go um, after a spell in hospital. And the thing about this environment is that it's, the patient is surrounded by ambient sensors. So um, sensors that... that, that Will, will provide information not just about the, the patient's life signs, so things like their heart rate, their blood pressure, and so on. Um, you know, those, those key sort of medical indicators. But also sort of things like um, the, the quality of the patient's sleep, or even um, things like uh, how, you know, how, how well the patient is moving around. You know, the areas they're having difficulty in, like opening a door or, or climbing up some stairs. And this provides some really sort of really valuable information, insightful information that the healthcare professionals can use to, to monitor the, 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 the care of that patient. Um, and we think, you know, t technologies like this are going to become really, you know, not, not just powerful, but essential going forward. We think by the end of the next decade, there'll be another 600 million um, elderly people in the world. You know, I think we will come to rely on these sort of technologies to, to really kind of provide this sort of next generation of, of healthcare. Um, and then one final short example. Um, uh, I want to take you to Japan. And in Japan, we're collaborating on a quite an ambitious project that started three years ago. And this was to create an artificial intelligence that was capable of getting into a university, and not, not just any university, but capable of passing the entrance exam to the University of Tokyo, which is the most prestigious university in Japan. And less than 1% of students um, have the, you know, demonstrate the aptitude to, to, to pass the, the, the entrance exam to it. Um, now, already within three years of being part of this program, uh, the AI that's been developed um, created a ma went past a major milestone last year. We're actually um, its capability level had, has risen so that it could, it could actually get into around 80% of Japan's universities. Um, so it's actually not got far to go to reach the standard for, for, for Tokyo University. Um, so can a robot getting into the, get into the University of Tokyo? We think yes. And if that's possible, then you know, just imagine what 
what then could be possible with technology. You know, just imagine what possibilities there are, what questions that technology can be, can be used to, to, to find the answers to. Um, so all of these examples, I think, illustrate that, you know, we, the, the customer engagement is really important to us as an organization. You know, this is how we learn, um, and this, this is really how we kind of decide what we need to invest in. Um, and what's you know what what's really sort of important in 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 in, in how we're evolving as a as an organisation, you know we're a very high touch organisation. So we, um, you know, we're empowered for decision making. We are um, working with us means that we you know we we like to kind of meet our customers' requirements and 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 be able to kind of deliver sort of quite specific things to meet their needs. Um, and really, this all comes together. Uh, in our strategic, our new strategic offering, which is MetaArc. Um, and you'll hear a bit more about this uh, today. Um, but MetaArc really kind of brings together our digital capabilities really into one sort of approach, one philosophy, um, one offering. Um, and as well as, you know, currently being built around our K5 cloud platform, it's going to incorporate things like mobility, artificial intelligence, um, and Internet of Things technology. As it continues to evolve, and this is, you know, if you if you think back to when I spoke about balance, you know, an offering like MetaArc is really um, how we're kind of evolving our capabilities to enable that for our customers. So to be able to manage the kind of the traditional foundational IT, but at the same time bring in new innovation. Um, so just to bring this to, to a close. You know, I'll just recap very quickly about some of the things I've said today. So if you think back, you know, we started with the four digital waves, uh, the internet, mobility, uh, the internet of things, artificial intelligence. And we talked about the values that technology can bring for, for, for organizations. So better intimacy with customers, uh, operational excellence, product innovation. Um, and I've tried to show you how we're sort of you know, those things get woven into our engagements with customers. You know, some of these engagements with customers involve different technologies along the, the series of waves and equally about addressing different, um, different outcomes. Um, but fundamentally, we see these engagements with customers as being steps on this journey to our vision of creating a world where people are empowered and they're empowered to, to, to innovate through technology. So just before I finish, I want to leave you with some, some thoughts and perspectives from thought leaders from around the industry, as well as our own, uh, some people from Fujitsu as well. So could we share the video, please? We are just in the early stages of the second machine age, the digital revolution. The technologies are here, and we're only beginning to glimmer and understand what the implications are for how we organize work, how we organize markets, and the new kinds of inventions that entrepreneurs have for business models. This is the time where technology really is a very, very fundamental strategic weapon for any organization. The relationship with customers, building data-driven organization, and then even more, fundamental shifts in business models, which are the result of technology. Technology used to be nice. Technology used to be about making things a little bit better and a little bit more efficient. Technology stopped being nice. Technology is now a little nasty. It's disruptive. And uh, by 2020, everybody's expecting something like 50 to 60 billion things on the internet. So it will be a device-dominated uh, network, and you cannot really implement the Internet of Things without relying on cloud uh, services, and you absolutely do need the methods of big data to deal with the vast amount of information that is being produced by the sensors. And IT is almost an art where, where you constantly balance, you know, I gotta keep things running, I gotta keep it secure, I gotta deal with the demands of every day, but at the same time, I need to place it strategically at the heart of what the company is doing, specifically given the, the digital transformation that we see around us. CIOs are tasked with being focused on the future. So the CIO has to figure out a way to solve the problem of the legacy infrastructure while trying to stay focused on the future. 
What we are seeing right now is that internet technologies are creating new markets. They are creating new marketplaces, new platforms that are already booming. If you're a CEO, you know, you used to be very cautious of how much you spent on IT. And every year when the budget process came through, you would always be asking the CIO, I want to do more with less. Now, you're not waiting for that budget season to occur. You're going down into their office saying, I need to have applications that we can get our products and services in front of our customers in an impactful way, in a way that they want to be uh, transacted with and build a relationship. 究極的には一人一人の人がですね、場面を変えても自分がこうあってほしいなと思うところをサポートしていく形で新しい価値につなげる。あくまで人をエンパワーする。Fujiso has a good sense for feeling where the world is going. You ask me,、uh, are we going、uh, towards a human-centric、uh, uh, age? The answer is、uh, yes, finally. So, as we go into our break, I've just got three asks for you.、Um, so, do visit the, the exhibition.、Um, and when you ex visit the exhibition, think about、um, a business challenge that you have and, and, and think about maybe how, you know, what, what some of these technologies can do、uh, to, to, to resolve your, your business challenge. Think about as well some of the things that you've heard in the,、uh, in the sessions of the conference.、Um, and then finally, come and talk to us. And together we can explore the possibilities of co creation.、Um, so, thank you very much indeed for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, David.